where are you finding the insights or gleaning the, the insights from data uh, so that you can create what the next great innovations are going to be? You could create one versus 100. You have a, a server farm of, of, that allows 100,000 people and nobody shows up. You know, it's kind of that butterfly in your stomach for the first two minutes that, <laughs> that it's open, you know? Um, so where, you know, where are these things coming from and, and how do you make them into something that, that the gamers really want? Um, uh, in our case, it's a, it's a combination of a qualitative and quantitative uh, research. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, Xbox is, is, as an environment, completely hooked up to Omniture, so we, you know, do detailed tracking of people's paths through, and, you know, we study user behavior, and that's great. You know, we also do a lot of qualitative research. Um, and then sometimes we just have just, you know, developer, gamer, you know, people that build the products have insights. You know, one versus 100 came from just that basic human instinct that says, you know, you're home and you're watching, whether it's Jeopardy or some other, um, some other game. Oh, I think I was supposed to have my phone off. Okay, bad me. I never turned my phone off. There we go. Uh, I know. I, um, so, so um, one versus 100 came from this basic insight of people wanting to participate. You know, you know the answer. You want to, you know, you want to know if you got it right, and and that's just a. a you know, hey, I know something I want to share. So there's a lot of great data that back that up. That said, we certainly had that sort of moment, that anxiety moment that you described, which is like, okay, is anyone going to show up? And you have it in both directions. Is anyone going to show up? And is too many people going to show up? And we're kind of bumping up against the latter problem, which is a happy problem to have. Uh, we use a similar approach. Um, when we build the platform, we actually built a business intelligent infrastructure that allows us to dynamine uh, on the hourly, on an hourly basis, uh, anything from a click on an ad creative all the way to our funnel process of the acquisition and, and then what they're playing, when they play, how often, how long, what they're buying, how much they're spending, what payment gateway they're using, uh, if they're using our social network, if they're on our forums. So using that and creating trends and patterns, uh, it allows us to basically get a really good feel for what's performing, what's not performing, and how our users are responding to this you know, real-time retailing business that we're in. Um, and you know, secondary to that is, is because we have forums uh, and we run real-time content, we have game managers, um, product managers, uh, and CS teams, et cetera. So we get real-time feedback, uh, not just on our portal and in the forums, but also directly to the guys who run in the games all day long, uh, interacting with our users of what's working, not working, what's you know, very cool about Rockaware, what, what do they like it to do, what they're willing to pay for it. Uh, and so we combine both uh, in a similar fashion. Uh, Rupture.com was, was much easier. Sean Fanning had, a, like I touched on, had an idea of how do I connect to all my friends and how do I make that relevant to the social community. Well, what he saw in Napster was a way to find music that was beyond what marketing was giving him, because I can look at what my friends are sharing and what they have, and now I'm learning new things and going into markets that I might not have before because my friends are there. So how do I play that, apply that to, to gaming? And then with the... Uh, EA acquisition, it became possible because you need to break down all the silos of all the specific brands and bring them all into one place, which before has been taboo in our world. So by being cross-platform and agnostic that way and cross-publisher, the user has a much better tool now to see everything instead of I'm just going to see Sony product or I'm just going to see Microsoft product or I'll just see Nintendo product and this, I'll see all these products and I'll see what's mattering to my community and my friends, and that will enrich and broaden my gaming lifestyle. So for him, that pitch was tough, um, but starting the service, everybody saw the value of it right away, and when you talk to gamers or you talk to anybody in the industry, they all get it right away and say, okay, I can see the value in that. Let's, it's a hard way to find out what's happening in the gaming world unless you're connected to seven or eight different websites. So just by watching your friends, you're going to get a much farther, faster way to get there. Just, just one quick follow-up question in terms of payment, right? Because in, in Rupture's case, that's totally free. In your case, it's microtransactions. And some things are behind the, a gold subscription wall, so to speak, in, in Xbox Live. I mean, where does the, the, where's the line drawn between what is premium enough to charge people for versus what uh, is good enough to stand on its own as, as a free platform to kind of incite people. Because in, in that case, from a marketer perspective, you, you want to know what that line is. So then it gives you opportunity to find things to sponsor and to enable uh, in a gamer. And, and that's where the value proposition comes in, uh, in terms of how much you're willing to pay versus how much is it really worth, as was alluded to in an earlier panel. 
Yeah, it's a, you know, how to draw that line is certainly a time-honored question, and it's one that we've experimented with uh, a lot. Um, I would say, in general, on Xbox, there is a bias towards moving up, meaning uh, gold subscription required. Um, a, a great recent example of sort of a confidence builder in that direction was, was Netflix. Mm -hmm. So as soon as, you know, there, there are people that are buying Xboxes and so that they can simply watch Netflix, which right. is, it really represents a broadening audience. That's mom and sister, not just gamer boy, right? And, and I, I say Netflix as an example of, of, of you know, subscription content. Um, there are many other examples from many studios. Um, so we sort of feel like there's this dynamic that's starting to occur where enough people are saying, yes, I see value. And again, we're talking about $49 a year. That that snowball effect, 20 million users, is now starting to fund additional opportunities. And I think the users are starting to get the equation that, wow, collectively as a subscribing audience, we are underwriting even more in content investment. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of on that role right now, and I think we're biasing more towards there. That said, there will always be silver stuff. Right. Uh, and I think what's interesting is that in, in your model, you have to buy a console, you have to purchase the games, and then you can purchase an Xbox Live subscription. And, and I guess that's expected, but Wilson, I, I think it's a little different for you because your initial entry point is, is something that's open and free. So. Yeah, so we really look at it as running a real-time retail business. Um, getting people in the door is great, but it's kind of like going to the club. You can ticket them at the door, or you can create a VIP lounge, VIP section, and sell them a $1,000 bottle. And why, why does that guy buy it? Well, it's vanity, you know? And if you look at games, actually half of the users in-game uh, tend to use opposite-sex genders to you know, interact as avatars or as characters. So vanity is a very big uh, component of why uh, people want extra things. Um, and then, you know, this is a consumer nation, and people want it faster, better, you know, greater experience on the spot. They want it immediately. So there's always people willing to pay to bypass any grind that are in games. Um, you know, World of Warcraft, there's a $2 billion black market supposedly for, for, for item trading. Uh, so it, it is about consumer behavior where our users can play the entire game. Uh, but for different levels of experiences, and because we run events and promos and we create context, Hey, we can say, hey, you know, we're having a pool party or we're having a beach party, and, and suddenly there's a bunch of new bathing suits, and everybody wants to come out with the latest things that just, you know, took place, or you can come out with whatever you're wearing. And it's, it's just natural human behavior when you go to a wedding, when you go to a party, when you go to Halloween. I mean, you buy things. So we're really not looking to do anything more than what's already taking place uh, in, in human behaviors uh, in the market, which is people expect a certain quality and certain experience for their time, uh, and we service uh, a greater amount of experience um, based on items that we, uh, we catalog. Uh, 